Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. I'm your host Marwan El Mubadir and today I'm going to share with you my recently published case report about a successful management of an alveolar nerve injury done with photobiomodulation therapy. So I'm happy to be here in the 17th World Federation Laser Dentistry Congress here this time in this amazing city in Roklo in Poland. So without further ado, let's start. Now in our daily practice, we face some uh, complex case of a wisdom tooth extraction, lower wisdom tooth extraction. And with this comes the risk of a nerve injury, of course. And of course, some other cases such as placing an implant in the lower mandibular arch also come some complications such such as an alveolar nerve injury now in general these uh, symptoms of a nerve injury will be a sharp pain jabbing throbbing burning and based on the documented literature we have four to five percent of the procedures with a risk of an injury and almost 300,000 cases per year were reported. We are talking only about the reported cases, so it's quite or relatively frequent. And for sure, as you know, that any kind of a small nerve injury, even if only a, a, a weird sensation uh, of numbness on the gingiva, will affect very largely the quality of life of the patient, and the patient will require a treatment and it will affect negatively his psychological aspect. So, of course, treatments have to be done when it comes to a nerve injury. Unfortunately, when a nerve injury will happen, uh, the, 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 dent the dentist, or let's say the surgeon, will uh, learn that there is not much that he can do. We're going to see in the upcoming slides. Just want to say that the symptoms of our too frequent or of the two um, injuries that will concern us are the injuries of the lung lingual nerve and the injury of the lower alve alveolar arch, uh, alveolar um, nerve. So for the lingual nerve, the sensation of uh, anything related to the tongue, numbing, taste alteration, pain will be the symptoms of a lingual nerve. And concerning the alveolar nerve damage, the symptoms that are related to the chin, the lip, the mantin, or the alveolar process and the gingiva of, of course, the concerned area, so the lower mandibular uh, teeth, will uh, posterior teeth, premolars, molars, will be related to an alveolar nerve damage. And in general, when it comes to the alveolar nerve damage, the symptoms would be a combination. And um, based on literature also, also uh, and on documented studies, alveolar nerve damage is more frequent than a lingual nerve damage. As I've said, when it comes to treatments, unfortunately, there is not much that we can do. There is only surgical and non-surgical interventions. From now, few words, surgical interventions are very uh, limited in their uh, indications. They have many drawbacks, requires a very skilled surgeon, and the results are not guaranteed. So surgical interventions might not lead, even if these procedures are very expensive and requires very skilled um, surgeons, these interventions might not lead to any positive result and present, as I've said, many drawbacks. Concerning the non-surgical, for example, analgesics, vitamins, corticosteroids, gels, and opioids. The problem is that in general, these medications will only attenuate the pain. The pain will control the pain, but will not eventually lead to a healing or will not stimulate or intervene with the healing process of the nerves. So this is why these, um, this kind of intervention, giving analgesics, is also very limited so only what will happen is that some the, the, the patient during the healing process if any healing will happen will not feel any pain that's the only indication 
So with everything said, let's move now to the photobiomodulation therapy. What are the current evidence when it comes to photobiomodulation therapy in neuroscience, but specifically in peripheral nerve injury or in nerve damage? Everything that I'm going to say in this section will be based on this review article. This review article was written um, by uh, Professor Rochkin. In his review article, he talks about his personal experience. He shared with us some clinical and in vitro studies. I'm going to give you only the conclusion of these in vitro and clinical studies. So, what have what? Uh, Professor Rochkin did in his in vitro studies, he did a model of sciatic crush injury. So two group of rats, he uh, made a crush of their sciatic uh, nerve. So they have now a sciatic nerve injury and these two groups will be divided into two. One group will um, underwent photobiomodulation therapy during the healing process and the other group will be left without any intervention. And with this, Professor Rochkind will highlight the effect of photobiomodulation therapy. The first conclusion was about muscle atrophy. He noticed that the group of rats that underwent photobiomodulation had less atrophy compared to the control group. That's the first result. The second result was obtained from histological sectioning. He noticed that photobiomodulation group shows almost no scars compared to the control group with the presence of abandoned scars. The third conclusion was when I'm seeing or inspecting uh, the nerve itself. So photographs of the sciatic nerve of an adult rat three months after a neurotube reconstruction was for the photobiomodulation group similar to intact nerve compared to uh, not if at all not the same image when it comes to the group that didn't underwent any kind of photobiomodulation therapy. So, photobiomodulation group presents a picture close to intact nerve clinically of its uh, nerve for sure. And in his clinical study, he saw that the MRC scores so or the motor function of patients after injury and underwent photobiomodulation therapy is significantly better the score is significantly higher after six months compared to a non-treated group so to conclude the current evidence that can be found in literature okay and of course i'm not giving here an exhaustive um, review i'm just giving you an evidence of a very interesting review article photobiomodulation prevents atrophy prevents the presence of scars decreases significantly any kind of degenerative effects, results in morphological aspect of the nerve that can be, uh, that we can say that is similar to intact nerve and increases the motor function significantly compared to placebo. Now with all of this done, when the patient was referred to me and I saw the literature, I've told the dentist that referred the patient to me that yes, we can do something we can try. So let's talk now about my case report. I just want to remind you that this case report is uh, free of access. You can find it on PubMed. You can read in details the protocol, the parameters, if you want to apply it yourself. The patient was healthy. He was young, no systematic disease. He came after six months and nine days of non-improvement of symptoms after an extraction of the lower wisdom teeth. The dentist who referred the patient knew already that there was, uh, uh, there was a complication, there, there was an iatrogenic accident and they, uh, um, uh, they did something, let's say, on the lower uh, alveolar nerve. He was referred to me. The symptoms that I've noted in the first session According to the patient, a complete numbness of the mucosa of the concerned area, for sure from the canine to the molar, a robust con 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 contraction of the muscle, deep cutaneous pain, complete numbness of the concerned the chin and lip and the mantan area. I've diagnosed the patient based on uh, the MRC, the Medical Research Council, 
that he has a severe iatrogenic um, nerve injury made during the extraction of the right mandibular arch. So these, of course, based on the MRC, were the sensation of the patient, the symptoms, lower lip with deep cutaneous pain in an autonomous zone, uh, the chin, no sensation at all, the cheek, no sensation at all, gingiva and mucosa of the concerned area, no sensation at all. And we can uh, add to this table that the cold test was abnormal. There was like five seconds of delay between the stimulation and the sensation of the pain. So if this is the patient, this is the representation of the symptoms. Now, what are the parameters? Of course, I cannot in details now uh, discuss with you why I've chosen these parameters, but what are the parameters? These are the parameters that I've uh, used. I did 42 sessions in total, and after six sessions, so for me, a series of sessions was six sessions. After six sessions, I will come, I will ask the patient, is there any improvement? We will do the test on the chin, on the lip, on, we will do the cold test on the gingiva. If there is an improvement, I will continue the treatment. So that's how I was working. Each series, there was an improvement, and this is why we did in total 42 sessions. This is a presentation of how I generally do the photobiomodulation and how I did photobiomodulation for this patient. I like to give a 48 hours of break between each session. So the first week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Friday. next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then this is a series. I will repeat the series and each time I will document, I will write if there is any kind of improvement. Concerning now the protocol, these are um, the targeted area, extraorally and intraorally. You can see these uh, yellow points. These are the targeted areas. Okay. So, nine points extraorally, uh, five points intraorally. This is a representation, this type of table is a representation of, so S means a series of sessions, so each S is uh, in fact six sessions of photobiomodulation, and this is, you can hear from this table, see the improvement of the symptoms. So for example, gingiva and mucosa started to improve, but un until uh, S7, so until uh, seven series of sessions, each session, I will repeat, is six, uh, each, uh, each session, uh, each uh, series is six sessions. So after all of these sessions, the patient still had a light abnormal sensation on touching. But for the cheek from S3, there was a normal sensation, so complete healing. Lower lip, a complete healing after S7. Normal cold test was obtained after S3, so after uh, six series of six uh, after three series of six sessions no contraction was obtained at s6 and no contraction of the lip was obtained at the end at s7 so i just want to remind you that this patient did not have any kind of improvement until six months post extraction so he did an extraction there was an alveolar nerve damage a severe one, there was no improvement until six months, any kind of improvement. And then after six months, we started photobiomodulation and now we can appreciate the improvement. So this really um, shows that photobiomodulation was doing something, okay? So before, as I've said, these were the symptoms, complete numbness of the gingiva, contraction, sensation of contraction, generalized and vac pain, deep cutaneous pain, and this is after abnormal, uh, sorry, uh, abnormal sensation uh, on the gingiva, but other than that, everything was completely healed. So, to conclude really this uh, brief lecture about 
the amazing uh, effect of photobiomodulation and the alveolar nerve damage. Photobiomodulation showed a significant improvement, but no total recovery was obtained. These are, uh, this is the conclusion that you can uh, obtain from this lecture. You need to know that photobiomodulation must be applied properly based on scientific evidence. The protocol, parameters, wavelength, all of these must really be wisely chosen and based on scientific evidence.